Hi everyone, welcome back. Thank you very much for stopping by my channel and podcast. I really appreciate you. Every single Monday there's a new video and usually it has something to do with what happened during my week, what happened during your week, and there's always some interconnectedness. There's always some relationship between what's been going on in my life and what's been going on in yours. Of course, because I don't speak in extremely specific situations and terms, we keep things relatively simple. And remember when oversimplifying something used to be a really bad thing? Like, remember in math class, show your work. And I hated those words, show your work. I'm like, I got the answer. Don't worry about how I got it. There were no calculators involved anyways. Oversimplification was a terrible thing. It meant you didn't know your stuff. And now we overcomplicate things. You may do this yourself, because I do this too. I overcomplicate the very simple things. The very simple decisions that I just have to make that would, that would be good to make. What path to go down. It's relatively simple. Just choose one. And things will come into play. And you know what? If that's the wrong way anyways, either backtrack or you go to the next one. We got time anyways. Oversimplifying is what we need to do now, I think. Because we're questioning way too much. We have information that's accessible anywhere and everywhere. So much of it too that if you want to know something, you can know something right now. Whatever you want to know, you can know it most questions. So in the sake of, and in the theme of simplicity, being simple minded, which seems to bring uh, a lot of happiness to people. I'm going to tell you something very simple. Something that you know, but maybe it hasn't hit you yet. Like it hit me. I remember um, scrolling through Reddit. I came upon this post and it said, you know you don't have to be friends with people you don't like. Obvious, right? But in a different way, I was like, oh, I don't. Like, as if this post and things we see and things we read and things we hear, again, give, give us permission, like I said in the last episode. Give us permission to rest. Give us permission to look at things a different way. It's almost like this, this confirmation that, okay, I was kind of thinking about that and I'm like, you know, 359 degrees to turn that way or no, I should say 179 degrees to turn that way and just hearing that one more thing, one more person say it, one more post is and then you're completely the other way and you're good and you're at peace and content. So sometimes something as simple as that just got to me. And something else that got to me, I was chatting with my sister and, you know, she's, she's in Barcelona. They're doing a whole bunch of traveling right now. And for some strange reason, I don't feel the need to travel as much. I did a bunch of Rome last year and I did Mexico and, you know, nothing, uh, Victoria to visit Vanessa. And I think that's enough for me in this season. But to simplify something real quick and it may hit you and it may not thanks for sticking with me everybody everything right now in this very moment for all moments to come and since the beginning of time every insect every mammal the dolphins are doing this right now the fish are doing it the person in the international space station is doing this right now your dad's doing it. Your mom's doing it. Your boss is doing it. The person working at Subway right now making a sandwich is doing it. Your biggest hero is doing it right now. Elon Musk is doing it right now. Some other influencer or, or YouTuber you watch. Everybody you know is doing it right now, including you. And what are we all doing? In the simplest of terms. We're just passing time. We're all just passing time. That's it. That's all we're doing. And people are doing that in different ways. Now I know, 
Scott, this is channel obvious, but hear me out because why are you complicating things so much then if it's that simple? It's so simple that since we're all passing time and we got on average like 80 years to do it, what are you doing with the time? How are you passing it? Because it's going to pass regardless. That's what everyone's doing. How do you want to pass it and how do you need to pass it? Two things here we're going to chat about, okay? I was, uh, I was playing hockey last night. haven't played in years. And it's at Kew Gardens, this place east in Toronto. And it's the whole outdoor rink. It's got the floodlights, the Zamboni, everything. Uh, an old boss of mine invited me and it was such a good time. It was such a good time. I debated going. I'm like, the condo's comfy. I got great company. I got a dog. You know, it's like I got my guitars and I got, you see my TV and stuff. It's pulled out right now because I was just, um, I set up the new speakers, the receiver. I got to show you all. This is a receiver, a pioneer from like the 60s and, or sorry, yeah, the 60s and the record players of Sony from the 70s made in Japan. It sounds amazing, but the receiver was like too big and it was sticking out of the little console here. So... I was digging out today, digging out the square in the back, cutting through the wood so I could slide it back in, feed the cables in, and it would be flush with everything else. That's what was going on today. That's how I chose to pass the time today, and it was the best thing ever. Last night, I was passing the time watching TV, and I decided to change things up a bit and went skating with a friend and all these people and had a great game of shinny. It's amazing. I scored a goal. And I'm a terrible skater and I can't handle the puck, but I scored. That's how I chose to pass the time last night. That's how I both needed and wanted to pass the time last night. I needed to socialize, get out there, be physical and test this new neck that I've been working on to see how it is on the ice and, you know, real poke checks and real puck handling. How's it going to do? And I wanted to go because... I wanted to feel the fresh air. My friend Mitch and I were talking about when you're done a shift and you go to the uh, to the boards for a break, uh, whatever you call it, not the box, let's say, and you have that sip of water outside, out of breath, thirsty. That sip of water is nuts. And we were both so excited for that. And that's what we wanted to experience. So we passed some time that way. We pass time skating around, shooting a rubber puck. That's it. That's it. So how do you need to pass time and how do you want to pass the time? So here's, here's the thing. If you break your leg, tear your ACL. I know some of you watching have torn your ACL, the most common knee injury, or torn meniscus. And what do you do to recover? Well, you want to pass the time by getting out there, skiing again, playing basketball, walking around. But you need to pass the time slowly. You need to pass the time patiently. You need to pass the time by doing physio. You need to pass the time by taking some painkillers. You need to pass the time by getting the brace on. That's how you need to do it. And sometimes the needs definitely come before we can access those wants. And if you put it real simply, when you're really in a rut... And really complicating things of just what it is to, to live and exist. And we know this existential anxiety. The truth of the matter is nobody can ever know what's going on in your mind. No one can ever know. And that's kind of a, a scary reality because we can only come as close to us as, as relatability. Like, can you relate to this? But you don't know, know it. But I guess you can come close. And... Since you only know what's going on in your mind, you can perceive the world in ways that you want to, regardless of what anybody else thinks, because they have no idea. You could be walking around looking miserable on the streets, but you're actually really happy. And that's what's going on inside your mind. You could look really happy on the outside, but you're dying on the inside. We know I've been there, and I'm sure you have. With this perspective of just what do I want to do and what do I need to do to pass time? It goes back to that thing episodes before where I'm like, just like what you like. Just do what you'd like to do. Pass time. Why are you passing time doing things to maybe impress other people or look a certain way online? 
why not just pass time in the way that's most beautiful for you? I passed time today setting up the hi-fi system, cleaning the condo, had to go to Shopper's Drug Mart, came back home, got uh, Perry, uh, his nails clipped, went for a walk with Vanessa, traveled around the city a bit for some sunshine because it's finally out. Now we're going to go to Winners because I don't own any clothes and I dress like I make no money at all and... I think it's time that I get at least something fresh. I'm needing to pass time tonight by doing something I hate, which is shopping. And it's just like this total balance of things. So Scott, I need to go to work. I don't want to. Sure, there's the need. The need is to pass the time by doing something you don't necessarily like, but you get the goodies at the end to pass time the way you want to for the rest of it. Everybody is doing the same thing. What does Gordon Lightfoot say? For I am just a painter passing through in history. We're just on the bus passing right through in this little blip of time. You get to pass it however you want to. The way that suits you best. The way where your authentic self can express. Show the world what it was like if aliens came here 600 years from now. Or humans look back 600 years. What are they going to say about you in the way we lived? If they got your diary, your artwork, your work ethic they saw, how you treated other people, you know, what you did in your free time, what would these people say about you? How did this person pass time back in, in 2024? Interesting. Oh, they watched a lot of TV. There must have been entertaining shit on there. Wow. Oh, they're just watching Love Island. What the hell is that about? You know, oh, I see that they, they played instruments back then. Yeah, we're just doing that in VR right now, and we don't even have bodies. Very cool. And that person, it looked like every single morning they had to stretch and do some yoga and hit the hot shower because they were so stiff every single morning that this is what they had to do to prepare for the day. What discipline, what self-love, what determination. Wow. What would people say about you? What story would you leave behind? Fuck it, regardless whoever reads it. I don't give a shit. I know who's reading mine and who wrote mine and who's writing mine, however that works. And damn it, I'm just going to make sure my story's epic. Not epic in a way that I need to, be, need to be Tom Cruise and jump out of airplanes and motorcycles off cliffs. No. I need to make sure that what I do here is with the keenest sense of um, like awareness and presence, like, and that I and I immerse myself fully in the time and experience. And that brings me to number three: What do you need to do the time to pass the time? What do you want to do to pass the time? Keep it simple. And a question for you: Your homework this week, my friends. What do you do? And this was part of the anxiety course I put together. Just the links in the description for the six-part series, which is coming soon. I've said that for the last year. What do you do during the day? One of your hobbies. Sorry, I'm like going to barf right now. Hold on. Jeez. What did I eat? Oh, that was Subway. Jeez. Or I'll get to the point. Hold on. Damn. Meatball sub. Like, bless them. You know, the people working at Subway. I couldn't do it. But if I were to do it, I'd make a dope sandwich. And she made such a bad sandwich that everything was falling out. Like, the onion wasn't even in it. And and the lettuce and the tomato. And yeah, I put tomato on a meatball sub. Some people that's, think that's insane. Uh, if I'm paying eleven seventy three, I'm gonna you know put as much as I can on there. Damn. So she's passing the time that way, doing what she needs to do to get to those wants. And in the Conquer Anxiety course, uh, what I put together, and I'm gonna do a whole new version for everybody, and you're gonna love it, is you do a hierarchy of wants and needs, and you see what I really value 
and this hierarchy and what I want and what I actually need for myself in terms of compassionate self-care. I know you're going to love it. Stay tuned. So the third thing is this week, figure out what you do when time stands still. Meaning when you lose track of time, when you get lost in the moment. You know those times where it's like, oh, it's 1 o'clock, and then you check again, and oh, it's 5.30. What happened? What happened to the day? What do you do when you're losing track of that time? And you know the lesson in that already, but you have to discover it for yourself. That in those moments, you merge with, quote unquote, time, where there is no such thing. You're just so present in the moment that there is no sense of you anymore. You are what you're actually doing, which is nuts. Think about it. You, if you're, you know, painting, you become the paintbrush and you lose yourself in what you're doing and the flow of things and the texture of the paint and what you're thinking of doing and what you've done before and how you're going to blend this and blend that. But there's not a whole lot of thinking in it. You just know what's got to happen and you're completely merged in it. When I built a bow and arrow, I should show you guys, I was so merged into that, sanding, right? Getting the string done. I used this red oak piece and you have to really make it thin. You have to flex it over time. You have to heat the wood. You have to bend it. Like that was me in the bow. I wonder this week what you do and when you do it and, and what happens when time stands still. And I'd love for you to comment that. A comment about that and see, you know, is it similar to other people? Is it when you play music, listen to music? Is, when, is it when you're actually at work and time flies by at work? I wonder what, why that is. Sure, you don't love what you do, but you sure get lost in it. And what's wrong with that? Three things. And I know this is so, so simple. And this has gone on for far too long, but it's to bring home the point, my friends, Stop complicating stuff. It doesn't need to be complicated. The, what we like to do is we're going to dig, dig, dig for treasure, right? We're going to dig, 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 dig. And before you know it, we're like, oh my God, I've dig so, dug so deep that I'm looking at the nucleus and the ribosomes and the mitochondria of this cell. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Let me back up. Let me take a step back. And you're like, what am I even looking at? And zoom out, zoom out, zoom out. And oh, it's a deer. Oh, that's what I was looking at. I had no idea. I dug so deep and zoomed in so much thinking that the answer and the meaning to everything was in there, but it wasn't. It was in the object itself at surface level. And what certain teachers and certain people on YouTube are telling you to do is the real analytical and intellectual types is you got to really think about stuff and you really got to find meaning in everything. Man's search for meaning. What is the meaning of putting on your socks in the morning? I don't give a shit. My feet are cold. That's why I'm putting on socks. Done. Done. Well, what is the meaning? What, what, what happens when you're thirsty? Why drink water? So for the hydration, so your muscles move better, for your joints and to hydrate the synovial fluid in between. You drink because you're thirsty. Done. Done. Don't look any further. I was again, I told you I was at Shoppers Drug Mart. And there's a there's a Time magazine. And it was the science behind exercise. Why to do it, when to do it, how to do it. If you want to pass the time learning about exercise and science, awesome. That's your thing. But for me, I'm like, I don't want to pass the time reading about how exercise works. I'm not gonna dig in. I'm just gonna exercise because it feels good. I don't need to know about that. I don't personally, I, I'd, I'd just rather go for a run and feel the benefits. It's totally up to you how you choose to pass it. People on Wall Street and Bay Street here, they're passing it by putting on a suit every morning and sucking a bank's dick. That's their decision. Pass it however you'd like, as long as it's expressing your authentic self. And you're doing something that you really believe in and it's worthwhile and the needs do bring you to some wants. God bless you, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. And thanks for uh, 
listen, yeah, to the to the rep repetitiveness and the rants and uh, <laughs> just like we kind of got cyclical. But I really appreciate your time and for you stopping by. Remember every single Monday. And um, I think that's I think that's it for today. I think that's it. Uh, was there anything else? I swear there was something else. Yeah, I, I just hope you have a fantastic week. And comment if you'd like on YouTube to tell me about when time stands still for you and what you're doing to pass it. What's going on? Take care.